God. <laughs> These K-pop songs are so wild. Oh my god, there's no place to stop. You ready? Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, for the first time ever, I'm going to be checking out TVXQ. And as much as I know about this group, it's a duo now, a K-pop duo. It started all the way back in 2003 uh, as a five-member group, and now it's just down to two. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Guys, this is a reaction and analysis channel, so I will be pausing primarily to talk about vocal technique, but uh, as a music producer as well, I often end up commenting on audio engineering stuff and all that, all that you know, synth design and uh, certain effects going on in the background. Love talking about all that stuff. So if you'd like to watch the video all the way straight through from the beginning, Head to the link in the description, you can watch the original and come on back if you want to learn about, you know, what's going on vocally and musically. And uh, that's it guys. Let's jump in. First time viewing of TVXQ Rebel. These K-pop songs are so wild. They they catch me off guard every time. So we started off with a Carol of the Bells theme. And then of course that uh, what? How how are we starting there? I'm shocked already. So we go from this Carol of the Bells and a number of different synths and instruments, and then it goes into this little introduction thing where we get this big do 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 this big this big bass line going down with all this brass in the background, very very epic sound, um, the symphonic sound really, and then it goes and then it drops into this verse where you know we get back to kind of what we're used to with the the highly produced K-pop where you've got like. Some kind of big synth bass, heavy heavy drum samples, um, and then of course the voice very clearly right in the middle of the mix. It's got heavy kick snare pattern and we like this pretty dirty bass line, like pretty grimy. I'm going to turn on closed captions in case they actually work well. Sometimes they don't and the translations are all over the place. Not like I would know in this case anyway. But um, yeah, so really gritty, big gritty bass line with that heavy kick snare pattern. And we got that, we got that vocal right in the middle. I, you know, it's interesting with K-pop. Because there's so much going on from a producer, a music producer standpoint, often with these songs, I end up commenting more on the production than the singing until the singers do something crazy, which surely they will at some point. But right now, it's you know very low middle voice. It's very speech like. There's a lot of breath in the sound. We're not getting any like vocal fireworks to kind of rip your attention away from this absolutely crazy music production. That uh, sound is very similar to a sound used in Bury a Friend by Billie Eilish. You can go research that for yourself. But yeah, just that one sound effect. There are these sound effects happening in the left and right ear, these kind of like metallic sound effects and for a second i th i thought it might have been voices their voices just heavily distorted and panned left and right um i'm not so sure i'm gonna listen back Get <laughs> 
to stop holy shit um i gotta go back okay where did i where where did i start that last section i just had to let that play right here this we've got this like like these kind of mallet like sounds there's they're um probably probably synths i'm not quite sure but but mallet and percussive sounding are pretty much arpeggiating all over the place and totally totally changing like the soundscape of this of this part i don't know if you guys ever played diddy kong racing on the nintendo 64 but those mallets sound a lot like some of the like the tropical levels in diddy kong racing that is a pull that memory out from 25 years ago not to not to date myself crazy and very cool and just a huge switch from what we got before otherwise we still had that gritty bass right we still had the gritty bass going but that particular sound that mallet percussive sound really changed the whole changed the game changed the soundscape Do -do -do -do. and they're singing up just to to, to talk a little bit about the vocals. They're singing up to F4. That'd be high F for a bass, like me. Or high F for a baritone. Not not considered a high F for a tenor or other voice parts above that. Um, for these guys, it sounds very manageable. I assume they're both tenors, except I did hear some bring in the energy, which is the low F, and that certainly did not sound like a tenor voice, so maybe it's one tenor, one bass. Shout out to the bass, if that's true. We'll find out shortly. Um, anyway, they're singing up to bass high F, essentially, or the F above middle C. You know, getting into that upper chest range, pretty good vocal efficiency, right? There's not a ton of air coming through the sound once they get up that high. But, yeah, I'm, I am fully in, in, enveloped in the world of music production at the moment. That's up to tenor high C, so that's very high, and that, okay, we can talk about the vocals now. Ha ha, enter opera singer and not music producer, Peter Barber. Okay, so getting up to that high C, and you can tell as the pitch ascends, the vocal fold efficiency gets a little better, and you can, you can, you can, feel, when you connect fully in your chest voice all the way up to a tenor high C, there's a reason that's a very famous note in opera and other genres, is because no matter how high your voice naturally sits, you really have to stretch your per, your pure chest voice up there. Often in operatic performances, it's a little, depending on the kind of tenor, like a Rossini tenor, a really high Rossini tenor should have a high C, no problem. But if you have a, a big dramatic tenor going for a high C, usually you're like, you, you're not sure if they're gonna make it or not. And that's kind of what makes it really exciting. Cause it's really, it's like healthy yelling, and you're really stretching your vocal folds out to be able to reach that pitch. And we get that here from the the, the higher voice in this group, in this duo. Just listen to listen to that voice really stretch its way on up that tenor high C, and it's really really exciting. G, no problem. Bringing the energy. Energy. So that's down to bringing the energy. So that's that's very much in bass range. Um, I know plenty of tenors who can phonate down there. I know plenty of baritones that can phonate down there. To get a really good thick quality of sound down there, generally you need to be a bass or you need to be another a higher voice part with some with some morning voice. Quick example. My friend Casper, who manages the bass gang, this group I'm in. Um, very much a tenor, very much a tenor, crazy high range, but 
sometimes he literally has down to a low A. Ready for this? In pure chest voice in the morning as a tenor. So range is range is not always an indicator, not a, not an obvious indicator of voice type. But these these Fs sound quite these quite nice in this in the singer's voice. Bringing the energy. Breathing the energy. Breathing the energy. It doesn't have as much warmth as you'd expect from a like a bait like if I do it. Breathing the energy. There's a little more like uh ba -ba, like more roundness and warmth in the throat. But as far as the ease of how this singer is getting down to this F, sounds very much within within his comfortable range. This this low F, which I would have not have expected out of out of a K-pop group. Bringing the energy. Easy. Breathing the energy. Carol the bells. Bringing the energy. Breathing the energy. This is so crazy because there's like there's just this this synthy bass, not even drums, just a pulse a pulse bass, and the breathing the energy, and then there's this huge epic build with all this stuff happening, and then it goes back to. Breathing the energy goes back to this this pulse base with the with the vocal. This is crazy, guys. K-pop is wild. Every time I watch, I'm like, I don't. There's so much going on. I never know what to comment on. Breathing the energy. Bringing the energy. Breathing the energy. That's another high C. So this tenor's got high C's easy. Breathing the energy. Okay, very, very much far lower voice than you generally hear in K-pop. Possibly a bass. The singer is is go, is dipping a lot into vocal fry. So it makes it hard to tell because with vocal fry, you can extend your lower range way, 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 way down below your natural chest range, which is generally how you determine voice type as far as range is concerned. Uh, quick little side note. I know the music video is incredible. I'm not even commenting on it. Like I said, there's too much to talk about. So apologies, but I'm acknowledging the music video is absolutely bonkers and incredibly high quality, high production value as always. Let's listen to this bass. Breaking rules like the rebel. So he's like dipping down. Da -da. Da -da. I mean, really, like, probably, I mean, in vocal fry, going down, you know, in this range. Like, really, really, really low. If he was maintaining per chest voice, he would be like a true basso profundo. He's not. So I'd, I'm interested to hear kind of what his chest voice does. But. Regardless, that is a very that is a much lower voice than you generally hear in the K-pop scene or any kind of pop scene. This is so cool, man. I I love hearing a, a low voice in a, a pop genre of any kind because it's so rare and this just shows it can be done it can be done and it can sound really cool and i hope it op no bias here of course i hope it opens the door for more bases to have an opportunity to work their way into the pop scene a lot of what i hear coming out of like the k-pop scene and league of legends is there is there obviously two separate things but those two st styles and any overlap there, they are pushing the boundaries of bringing real bass voices into their songs and, and showing that it can work and add a cool new color and a new texture. So I'm, I'm so, so, so here for it. It's very exciting to hear. And I think it's really cool that this duo now that this group has become um, is a tenor and a bass. Like, that's awesome. So a tenor bass duo, super, super popular, getting tons of recognition. Love it. Absolutely love it.
high C again, and some really a really nice two-part harmony happening between them. The bass obviously taking the low harmony, tenor taking the high harmony up to the high C. Otherwise, pretty the pre-chorus leading into the second chorus is very much how it was the first time. So I'm not going to comment on again, and I'm and I'm not I am not commenting on everything. This is not I am not this video. There's so much happening just musically. I'm sure I could spend two to three hours talking about every little element happening in each section. I know that's not what y'all want. I could do it. I would probably love it. But I try to keep these to like 20 to 30 minutes, you know, um, that seems to work best. But so there's so much going on. So if you're like, whoa, how, why didn't he comment on this? Bear with me. There are too, there are too many things, too many things, simply. <laughs> It's like the, the the first order from Star Wars. That's what this looks like to me. Bringing the energy, breathing the energy. They're just, they're breaking, K-pop is breaking all the rules of what is traditional in writing pop music because <clears throat> there is often no smooth transition from one section to the next. There will be like a bridge in a different key or, or feels like it's a different key because the instrumentation has changed so much. And so you truly have no idea what's coming in the next section. Now, it does make it really fun to comment on, but it is jarring because of kind of what we're used to, um, at least in like Western pop music, where it's big like verse, chorus, you know, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus, pretty much. And it's pretty predictable. And there's so much amazing music in that formula. There's nothing wrong with it. And K-pop's really like turning the bar stool upside down and just showing like, ah, we can make popular music that does not follow that formula at all. There's obviously still verses and choruses, but there's so much radical change between like each of the sections could sound like a different song, basically. <laughs> Guitar. Just a little solo electric guitar we haven't heard in this yet in this song. C sharp. All the way up to tenor, high C sharp, full chest voice. Whoa, one more. There it is. Really, really awesome. Um, guys, if you have any idea how much these videos cost to make, I'd be very interested. Leave a comment below because they're super, super high budget. It's like Hollywood budget for music video. underground dubstep vibes almost um i produce dubstep now i've produced electronic music and, and dubstep especially for years and years and years i love it give me some bass wobbles any day you want and th this section is very much like a interesting like it's not it's not full-on dubstep obviously but dubstep adjacent um bass music like heavily produced <laughs> So now we are getting now a, a repeat of sections, but <clears throat> not kind of in the order you'd expect. 
Um, they, they skipped out on the second bit of the energy and, and then put this other bit that we had already heard where the bass singer was doing lead. And now we're coming back to the Diddy Kong Racing theme. That's what I'm calling it. Um, so it's like we're, it, we're kind of seeing like a little roadmap of the whole song kind of squashed together right at the end. Oh, and the song is called Rebel. Maybe they are giving a little shout out to uh, to Star Wars here. Surely they are. Now that I'm now that I'm actually paying attention to that aspect, which I was blinded by. But this is this is looking like this is looking like moments on uh, you know various starships. If you uh, have seen Star Wars, look at this. This is all very Star Warsy. Then we got. The first order moment here, right? Crazy. That's it, y'all. Um, wow, that's absolutely mind blowing. Everything about these, this kind of, this of course is not representative of all K-pop music, but you hear more songs like this in K-pop anywhere else than anywhere else. High production value, high music video value, really amazing voices as well, amazing dancers, and like some of the craziest, coolest music videos and just music you'll ever see so hope you guys enjoyed if you did enjoy if i enhanced your tv xq experience please do consider joining my patreon for free actually there's a free option you can kind of see if you're interested in what i'm doing over there and then if you'd like to join for as little as one dollar that's an option otherwise guys please do like this video leave a comment for the algorithm could be anything could you be just saying tv xq rules doesn't matter um Subscribe, super helpful. Hit the bell, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.